What if the clone troopers in Revenge of the Sith were able to resist Order 66 because of the bond and connection with their Jedi commanders? That's what I want to explore today, I hope you guys enjoy. Before we begin, the number on your screen there, if you guys could just help me out a little bit, it'd be much appreciated. Alright, here we go. Anakin Skywalker gave one final look to his new master, Darth Sidious, before heading down to meet with the 501st. They had a new mission. Anakin's first mission as a Sith apprentice. Storm the Jedi Temple. Kill every last one of the Jedi for betraying the Republic. Anakin stumbled down the stairs, going in and out of complete focus and complete panic, fighting with himself. He'd grown up in the temple, but he understood now that the only way to save Padme was to go all the way into the dark side, and to do that, he must kill these Jedi traitors. As Anakin reached the door, he knew there was no going back. Somewhere far below him, the body of Mace Windu would lay forever. Three other council masters were dead in Palpatine's office. The Jedi made a mistake. They had to pay. Anakin took a speeder over to the bottom of the Jedi Temple stairs, where the 501st clones were ordered to gather and wait for Skywalker. Anakin finally reached them, and he could feel a general uneasiness inside the clones. This was not good. They were supposed to be completely obedient to the Chancellor. What was going on? What Anakin did not know, and what Palpatine did not even know, was that across the galaxy, clone troopers were fighting. Not just fighting droids, but fighting against the new orders they had just received. Moments ago, Chancellor Palpatine had sent out an order to all of the clone troopers. Execute Order 66. And now, across the galaxy, clones were fighting through the Order. One thing that Palpatine did not anticipate when setting up the Order was the brotherhood and love that the clones would develop for their Jedi commanders. And if not, then nearly all of them at least respected the Jedi enough to question any Order, including this one, fighting through it. Perhaps the chips were decaying. Perhaps the clones were simply too strong for the Order. Chaos... Clones would receive the order, falling to their knees, dropping their blasters, even accidentally crashing ships as they fought against the order. For some, it was easy. For others, it took a lot more effort. But almost without fail, the clones were able to push through Order 66 and refuse a direct order of the Chancellor. On Felucia, clones took aim at Ayla Sakura, hands shaking, and they all dropped their blasters as Sakura turned around. On Cato Nemoidia, Plo Koon th flew through the air, and from behind him, clones locked in on his starfighter. But as the trigger was pulled, they were able to redirect their shot just enough to miss, fighting through the order. And then, they broke through it completely. Plo Koon was safe. On Megiddo, clones took aim at ki mundi and they shot him dead. Not every single clone resisted the order, but most did. Jaro Tapal, Depa Balaba, Grandmaster Yoda, thousands of other Jedi across the galaxy watched their clones resist this order, and then immediately inform the Jedi of what was going on. At once, all of the Jedi were informed that the Chancellor has ordered their death. And on Utapau, Obi-Wan Kenobi spoke with Cody outside of the battle as Commander Cody described what had happened. Cody told Obi-Wan that the Chancellor called all of the clones and ordered them to kill the Jedi. But the clones could not do it. They wouldn't. They were loyal to those they fought with. And Cody told Obi-Wan that it wasn't any old order. It was ingrained in them to execute it. They could feel it, but they'd fought it off. Obi-Wan pondered everything, now wondering how involved Anakin was with all of this on Coruscant. And back to the Jedi Temple, Anakin got to the front of the 501st men and loudly spoke, telling them that they've been given a direct order by the Chancellor. The Jedi have betrayed the Republic, and now they must pay. Anakin noticed that none of the clones moved forward. Instead, Oppo and a few of his men would now walk up to Anakin, and in front of his face, Oppo said to Anakin, I'm sorry sir, but we both know that's not going to happen. And the men behind Oppo lifted their blasters directly at Anakin as Oppo spoke again, saying, From our point of view, the only traitor here is you and the Chancellor, sir. We all heard the order. We all felt the pain in our heads, but we're stronger than some puppets for Palpatine. Now drop your lightsaber, and let's go ask the Chancellor what's really going on. Anakin fought with these clones countless times in battle, and this loyalty to the Jedi was not surprising, but Order 66 was supposed to erase that loyalty. Anakin was angry. He needed the clones to save Padme, 
He couldn't fight through his own anger. It was emotions were getting to his head. He couldn't go to the temple alone. He needed the clones. And Anakin thought perhaps they just need a new leader. Oppo is in the way. So Anakin took out his lightsaber and swiftly pushed it through Oppo's chest. The clone commander gasped and removed his helmet as Anakin pulled out the lightsaber. Bleeding from the mouth, Oppo stared at Anakin and simply said, Big mistake, before falling dead. Anakin was confused, lost in his own head, thinking this was the right move. He was wrong. He was lost. And he was about to call the clones to him as their new leader, but in a split second, they all raised their blasters and began to fire. Anakin was an expert fighter against blaster bolts, but more and more clones got to the front to fire at him. It pained Anakin to deflect the bolts back into his men, but this is who he has become. Anakin soon felt a bolt sear his right leg, then his left shoulder, then one grazed his side. Anakin fell to the ground, and in his anger he unleashed a force push that knocked the front row of clones into each other. As they tried to gather back with one another, Anakin leapt as high as he could, hiding behind a temple statue, then jumping high into the air to land in a speeder, flying through Coruscant. Anakin kicked the driver out and took control of the speeder. His injuries stung, and he flew it to Padme's apartment, stumbling inside as she ran to help him up. At the stairs of the temple, Commander Fox got to the front of everything now. He looked down to the fallen Commander Oppo, his brother, killed by Anakin Skywalker, because of Palpatine. Fox didn't understand. None of them understood. He wanted to know more. Why were they ordered to kill the Jedi? So he sent most of the 501st to spread throughout Coruscant, find Anakin Skywalker, bring him to justice, however they see fit. As far as Fox and the clones were concerned, Anakin and Palpatine were the traitors. Whatever order Palpatine gave to them, they had to fight through it, and Fox took a squad of troopers into the temple. At the door, they spoke to Gatemaster Jarak, asking him to see the highest ranking Jedi immediately. Moments later, Shock T was at the door, asking Fox what was wrong, and Fox tried his best to describe what had happened. Without reason, Palpatine called them and gave an order, Order 66, and upon hearing the order, Fox said that all the clones felt a searing headache, but they were able to fight through it, and Fox said that he feared the clones were designed for this exact purpose. But luckily their loyalties had changed from the Chancellor to the Jedi throughout the war, enough to resist this order. Shakti understood, thanked Fox, and took off running through the temple. After a while, she reached the temple beacon and began a message. Shakti sent out a message to every single Jedi, informing them that Palpatine is the Sith Lord, and the clones have been ordered to kill the Jedi for treason against the Republic. Shakti continued, saying the clones have come to realize it is Palpatine who is the traitor, not the Jedi, and she will be organizing an attack group to execute the Chancellor. Palpatine sat down in his office chair, feeling into the Force, and was immediately concerned. He expected a darkness to wash over the galaxy, but instead, nothing. Perhaps fear, sadness, but death did not come. This was not good, and he wondered what was happening with Anakin. In Padme's apartment, Anakin was tending to his wounds on the couch. He was hit in non-lethal spots, and back to pouches were helping him to heal. As Padme began to pester him with questions, who was shooting at him? Where did he get this speeder? What is going on? But Anakin would not say. He instead was only insisting that they had to go, get off Coruscant immediately. Anakin knew that without the support of the clones, he couldn't defeat the Jedi right now. He was completely alone in the Force, aside from his new master, who had already failed. Anakin was loading things into a speeder as Padme was panicking, trying to understand what was going on. And as Anakin went into another room, Padme looked to the ground to see Anakin's comlink. And curiously, it was beeping an emergency signal. Padme looked to make sure Anakin couldn't see her. Clearly, he dropped it upon landing here. Then she picked up the comlink, pressing the button to play the message. It was Jedi Master Shakti, and she spoke a message that horrified Padme. From the message, Padme learned that Palpatine was the Sith Lord, working with the Separatists and the clones were ordered to execute the Jedi. It all made sense now, why Palpatine refused to end the war over and over again, why more clones were constantly made, and Padme was relieved. Clearly the clones had shot at Anakin because he was a Jedi, but then Shakti continued on, 
saying that the clones refused to follow this order, and she said Jedi General Anakin Skywalker tried to lead the clones into the temple, but it was the clones that refused. Padme dropped the comlink to the ground, and she herself had to get to a couch before she fell over. Not Anakin. He couldn't be working with Palpatine. Not her Anakin. But she knew the truth deep down, and Padme pulled out her data tablet, pressing the emergency button on it to alert Cl Coruscant clone security to her immediate position. In the temple, Fox was with Shock T when his own comlink began to beep. He answered, as Coruscant security was alerted to a senator in danger, and records show that this specific senator has often had dealings with Anakin Skywalker. Shock T turned, knowing that it was Senator Padme Amidala. Shock T and Commander Fox ran to the temple hangar and got into a transport with ten other clones, taking off for Senator Amidala's apartment. Anakin was ready to go and was frantically trying to get Padme into the speeder. All he wanted now was to take Padme off world. He would give himself to the dark side, train himself to save her, and happily live with her and the child forever. He would do whatever it takes. But Padme was not getting on the speeder. Instead, Anakin turned around to see her pointing a blaster at him. She was crying, hands shaking, but she was sure about this. Anakin was dangerous. He needed help. And Anakin slowly approached, and then realized somehow she'd found out what was going on. Padme held up Anakin's comlink, and Anakin looked to the ground, angry about everything. He yelled that she doesn't understand, that he was doing this for her. Anakin circled around her, and now Padme found herself backing up against the ledge. She looked down below her, nothing but open air and Coruscant traffic. And now as Anakin realized she had nowhere to go, he held out his hand. Anakin asked Padme to join him. Together they can find a way to rule this galaxy. They don't have to follow Palpatine, make things the way they want them to be, and he can save her from certain death. Padme didn't know who this was anymore, and she accidentally took one more step backwards, falling off into the Coruscant night. Anakin sprinted over to the ledge in a panic, but as he got there, a clone transport lifted up into the air, facing him directly. Jedi Master Shock T stood in the back, hiding Padme as all of the clones took aim at Anakin. They'd caught Padme as she fell, just in time, and Shock T called out to Anakin, telling him to drop his lightsaber and surrender. It's over. And Anakin looked at Padme. She was frightened, frightened of him. And Anakin looked to the clones aiming at him, then to Padme, and he fell to his knees, dropping his lightsaber and saying, What have I done? The clones ran into the apartment, putting handcuffs on Anakin, and they all rode to the Jedi Temple prison together. Once in the prison, alone, Anakin pulled out the secret comlink given to him by Palpatine. This was to be used only between the two of them, and Anakin contacted his master, who then told Anakin his plan of escape with this plan failing. Palpatine sat in his office, trying to stay calm. He knew momentarily that his office would be raided. He had to get out of here. Anakin knew his plan. He would be meeting him in space. But first, Palpatine had to set up his contingencies. He was readying his ship, and had a personalized Star Destroyer traveling through hyperspace, with Sith loyalists ready to take him to Tantus. Palpatine finished his final preparations, and opened the door to the final hallway to his shuttle. But in this hallway, he was not alone. The first wave was here to stop him. Thousands more would be on their way, so Sidious knew he must act quickly. In the dimly lit hallway, Darth Sidious stood poised at one end of it, his eyes blazing with the yellow intensity of the dark side, and at the opposite end, five Jedi Knights prepared to thwart his advance. With them, thirty clone troopers, their blasters at the ready. With a subtle flick of his fingers, Sidious drew upon the power of the Force, blasting out all of the lights. Now in complete darkness, he moved with unnatural speed, a black blur slicing through the air. His crimson lightsaber, humming with energy, sprang to life now, casting a glow in the hallway, as he cut down clones before they could even see him. The first Jedi Master, Master Minas Veltus, lunged, lightsaber ignited in a quick swing. Sidious sidestepped effortlessly, his movements fluid as he countered with a quicker strike severing the Jedi's weapon hand, cutting her in half. And with a gasp, the Jedi fell. The other Jedi attacked in unison, their blades moving together. Sidious parried their blows with astonishing moves, his lightsaber a red blur deflecting each attack. With a force push, 
he sent one Jedi crashing into the clone troopers, creating momentary chaos as he cut down two more Jedi with a single spin. Seizing the opportunity, Sidious unleashed a barrage of Sith lightning, arcs of blue energy, snaking through the air. Clone troopers convulsed and fell, their blasters dropping. They were dead. The remaining two Jedi tried to resist, but the overwhelming power of the dark side got to them. With another flick of his wrist, Sidious sent them sprawling, lightsabers skittering out of reach. He snapped the neck of one of them, before the final clones began desperately firing again. Sidious raised his hands, and the troopers found themselves lifted off their feet, grasping for air. Their blasters clattered to their floor, useless. Sidious clenched his fist, and the troopers were slammed into each other, then into the walls, their armor denting, cracking upon impact. One by one, they crumpled to the ground, most of their bones completely crushed. His path was clear, but Sidious felt one more person behind him. One Jedi survived, Master Keller and Beck. He was bleeding from the mouth, and he carried a heavy limp from the fight, but he wielded two lightsabers. Sidious used one hand to blast lightning at him, and with the other hand, he pulled a lightsaber from a fallen Jedi behind Kelleran right into the Jedi's back. Then Sidious pulled him towards himself with the Force and cut the Jedi in half. With the path clear, Sidious boarded his shuttle and took off as Shakti entered the room with hundreds of clones trailing behind her. She had locked Anakin in the temple prison, surrounded by temple guards, and made it back here just a moment too late. Palpatine took off in his shuttle as Shakti watched as a Star Destroyer emerged. Palpatine got his shuttle into the Star Destroyer and got to the bridge. Hyperspace calculations were being made for Tantis. In the Jedi Temple, Padme entered Anakin's prison room, but as she looked around, Anakin wasn't there. And of course, the vent cover in the room had been removed. Padme ran out to the guards, an alarm began to sound throughout the temple. Anakin had to be found. Inside of the temple planning room, Anakin stood at a data table and contacted all Republic cruisers that were about to come out of hyperspace above Coruscant. In moments, he was speaking to Obi-Wan, Yoda, Plo Koon, Ahsoka, and Ayla Sakura. They all heard Shakti's message, and they knew that Anakin had become dangerous. But here and now, Anakin asked them to trust him, begging them to trust him. Anakin said Palpatine was about to blast out into hyperspace, but they can stop him. Anakin was lucky that Palpatine told him his plan, and he had no intention of keeping his loyalty to Palpatine after all of this had failed in his face. Anakin informed the Jedi that he is in a Republic Star Destroyer with no Republic personnel on board. Anakin said that if they trust him, the Jedi can stop the Sith from escaping. Yoda looked to Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan closed his eyes, then nodded his approval. He told Anakin the Jedi will trust him on this, and the call was ended as temple guards stormed the room. Anakin surrendered with ease. His mind was at ease as well now. After being arrested, he'd realized what he was doing, how he was failing everyone he loved, and in this moment, he did all he could to make up for it. Darth Sidious stared into the stars. Today was a failure, but in the end, he would win. The jump was calculated, and Sidious saw the blue lines of hyperspace begin to form, but suddenly they faded away, and the Star Destroyer began to shake and take heavy damage. Sidious fell to the ground, and as he got up, he looked out of the front of the window to see five Republic cruisers firing everything they had at his Star Destroyer. It was over, and Sidious wondered how they all knew he would be on this ship. And then he remembered the only person that he'd told about this, Anakin. Sidious screamed with anger as the bridge went up in flames, engulfing him in it before the ship exploded from the overwhelming firepower. The Sith were gone, destroyed by the Republic that they planned to overthrow. Days later, the Republic Senate would elect Mon Mothma as the new Chancellor of the Republic. The Senate learned of who Palpatine truly was, and the Republic was more than happy to elect a new Senator. The Clone War would go on for a few more weeks, but the Separatist leaders eventually panicked and surrenders without their Sith leaders guiding them, and Padme gave a safe birth to twins with the Coruscant Doctors the best in the galaxy helping her through it. She took the children down to a Republic prison. She walked past the cell with Darth Maul, locked inside of a box of some sort, and found Anakin. Anakin was shocked to see Padme safe and healthy after giving birth, and his cell was much more open and free, the reward for helping ultimately defeat Sidious. But in the end, he was charged with the murder of Mace Windu 
and clone commander Oppo. Anakin accepted this, and he would serve his time in prison, waiting for the day he could be free and make it all up to his children and Padme. And folks, that's where our story ends today. I had to change it up a bit with an Anakin ending, not give him the most happy ending ever. I could have killed him off, but wanted to do this with him, at least leave him redeemable and he could get out in the end. But yeah, let me know what you thought. I always enjoy Order 66 stories, they're fun to write, fun to talk about, just kind of humanize the clones more so, because they just turned into kind of robots when Order 66 hit, so appreciate you watching. Please do subscribe, it helps a lot. Please leave a like, and I'll see you in the next video.